<laughs> Isn't it fun to be in a, in a profession that so many people want to get in the room? I saw the slide from Nathan on LinkedIn, the number of jobs, customer success jobs profile on LinkedIn. This space did not exist three years ago. In fact, when I joined Mashery three years ago and the, 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 the CEO asked me, you know, how do you want to call this team? And I was thinking about customer success. It wasn't because it was big on LinkedIn. It happened to be this way over the last few years, partially due to these kind of conferences, which is wonderful. My name is Boaz. I run the customer success team at uh, Mastery. It's now part of Intel. And what I'd like to go over the next 20, 25 minutes is a case study of how we measure customer success. What are the metrics that we measure? Sorry for the background noise. Um, metrics is a hard, Metrics is a hard topic to cover in a very short amount of time. So what I figured we'll do is I'll give you a little bit of background. Why are we here? Who is Mashery? So you can put this in context. And then a case study, what we did. Then you will need to take it to your organizations and figure out what you want to do. But hopefully you can gain some insights from the way we've done it to your benefits. By the way, there's another session later this afternoon. They have this open mic type area where we can get more into detail. I'm sure most of you will not be able to read the details on the spreadsheet that I'm going to share. So let's talk a little bit about why we're here. We're here because we're believing, we believe fundamentally that if it's not worth measuring, it's not worth doing. We want to measure what we do, we want to communicate it to us, to our team, to our management, to our customers, and see whether we are successful or not. If, if yes, do more of it, if not, correct it. Here's what we're gonna do. A brief background on Mashery, because I want you to understand the context of the way we've done things then how we structure the customer success team at Mashery, and then the meat of this presentation, what we measure success and open up for questions. Mashery is an API management company. APIs is what make apps work. If you have any kind of an app on your phone, including the app for this conference, that app is sending calls to some data center in the back end to, draw, to get information. The calls are made through APIs and we manage those APIs. The importance of this field increases. It used to be connected devices, used to be computers. If you think about the recent years and into the future, almost everything is connected. Therefore, the use of API is more important. As you have more APIs and they become more complex, you need something to manage that. That's the management system that we provide to our customers. Um, we believe fundamentally that apps grant wishes. It's the difference between search and applications. When you search, you go one step at a time to figure out in the end what you want. An app is something that gets you directly to where you want to go. Let me give you an example. If you went, and this is a consumer, but you can make the analogy to business as well. If you wanted to find any information about a movie and you picked up that movie, there's some information about it, there's some rating, maybe a call to an action, buy the ticket or something. All of this information is essentially different pieces of data stored in the company database and you want to enable access to that, so you, you need to enable a port from your database to the outside world to whatever developers or applications that want to consume, to consume this information, and obviously those can be coming in many very different ways. This slide is important not because we are great, we have so many wonderful logos, but to give the perspective that the mastery business is predominantly enterprise focus, not user focus. So the context to what I'm going to talk about is a high touch enterprise business to business environment. I'm sure the metrics you would choose, the type of engagement you would have with the consumer world is very different. Therefore the measurements are different. I'm gonna focus on the enterprise side of things. Okay, so far for the background. Let's go into customer success. Fundamentally, and if you were in any presentation I made ever, if you were one of my teammates, you probably know this by how this starts every presentation of mine. In the end of the day, we as a company are measured by the amount of value we create for our customers. There are derivatives for that, how much value we create for our shareholders, how much value we create for ourselves, etc. But at the heart of it, if we don't deliver value to our customers long term, there's no value for us, we won't stay. This is how we structure the fundamental one primary and two secondary goals for our team as a whole. Number one, maximize value to your customers. If that works, then we can talk about how we maximize value to us monetarily and non-monetarily. So the first question is, well, that's wonderful. How do you define the value to the customer? And I'd like to suggest, because it's a presentation in a large form, a very simplistic model of a cube with three dimensions. 
One, the program scope. What does the customer do with us? Think about it in the most simplistic way, the line items on the order form. What have you enabled them? What have you sold them? The second is the program execution. How well do they use those functions? Think about it as the way you implement, the way your uptime is, etc. If you think about it from a cube perspective, if you sold them everything you have, but you weren't able to implement and go live, the value is going to be zero. But even if you were able to implement everything that you have, and it's not connected to the core of why they are in business, then the value of the cube is going to be zero. Right? So we have customers from time to time who want to have an API program because it makes sense for them or they think it makes sense, but they haven't thought it all the way through and it ends up cannibalizing some other side of their business. Well, clearly, we're not creating value, we're detracting value and the program needs to change. So think about it from this perspective, which leads you next to the question of what should the customer success uh, team look like? And I'd like to suggest that, or at least in our um, side of the business, we have professional services because these people influence the what and the how. They help the customer figure out what they need, right, which is that program scope, and they also implement the solution, so they influence sorry, the quality level of the implementation. The second team that is included in the customer success team at Mashery is the technical support team. This is obviously the team that looks predominantly over the ongoing management of the technical relations, uptime, performance, etc. So they influence the program execution, the how. But because we are a software as a service multi-tenant environment, we know exactly everything that the customers do with our solutions. So that team has the best finger on the pulse with why is the customer using our solution. When we see a spike, and I get emails, right, the reports on a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly basis, that team looks at that on an ongoing every minute perspective. When they see a spike in demand, they can go in and figure out what caused that spike. Is it because of a good problem? The company launched a new product and there's a surge of demand or a bad problem? Some developer hacking the system or had a problem with their code that is causing um, erratic behavior. That understanding of the why helps the customer optimize and maximize the value. The third team that we want to include in that organization is what we call customer program success management. This is the team that maintains the ongoing business relations between us and our customers. They take care of renewals, which is a term that we hear here a lot and I hate, but we have to do what we have to do. They also take care of the program expansion, which is much more interesting, how you grow the program. Guy, in his um, opening speech talked about the difference between measuring churn and measuring growth. And I think this is a fantastic distinction that I'd love this community of people in customer success to embrace more. Churn is about looking backwards and fighting defense. Program expansion is about looking forward and going on the offense. I think the difference is huge. Ready to start the presentation? <laughs> Metrics. All right, so a um, couple of frameworks. Leading versus lagging indicator is the first thing that I, I, I would suggest you to consider when you come to build your uh, metrics uh, scorecard or, or whatever. It's very unfortunate, I think, that most people, when they think about metrics, they, they think and measure lagging indicators, indicators that show us what happened in the past, not what will happen in the future. Revenue is the best example for that extremely important, but tells me nothing about what's gonna happen next week or next quarter. Um, leading indicator combined with lagging indicators give you a good balance of what happened and what will happen. Second is continuity. If you have one-time measures for this month or for this quarter without a view towards the future, how it evolves over time, it's only that good. So my suggestion is to start and have at least three or four quarters at any given time and evaluate and promote those on an ongoing basis if you want to have your team look continuously into the future. The third piece here is um, financial is only that important. We deal with customers. One, pass, one facet of our relationship with the customer is the financial, but there are others. So we want to measure holistically. And I would like to suggest these uh, kind of four basic parameters. Customer success is the first one, the one that gets the most weight. We'll talk about what goes in there. But it's essentially what does the customer get from us. Second is the financial success, which is the financial metrics benefits we get from the engagement with the customer. Third and fourth, we'll get lower weights, but are very important. 
Third, inter-team impact. If we touch customers, we are incredibly valuable to a lot of other teams within the organization. Marketing, sales, product. We'd like to incent our team and measure the performance we have, not only on doing our job, but also helping those other teams. And the last one, practice development. We can't stand still, we need to improve. I'd like to suggest some metrics to focus on how we improve the way we do what we do and measure that over time. So let's look at some examples. Again, this is a case study, the way we have done it at Mashery. You can take that and do whatever you want with it. Five basic parameters we looked at customer success. Um, actually, the first one should be the second, increase the portion of successful implementation. We have a metric how we define successful implementation and we measure that. The second one, uh, increase the number of program expansion opportunities. Program expansions don't necessarily yield revenue to us, but they increase the usage of the customer of our program. They use more features, they have more business units using us, they bought more seats, whatever. Financially or not financially, I don't care. The more they use us, assuming what we do provide value, the better they are, the better the value for the customer. Reduce number of red customers. We define red customers as the risk of that customer terminating the relationship with us within the next six months. So for example, a customer on a month by month uh, contract is on a higher risk than a customer on a three year contract. A customer with high, with high NPS score is lower risk for terminating than a customer with low NPS score, et cetera, et cetera. Increased portion of customers holding QMR. QMR stands for quarterly management review. Again, if you remember that cube and the customer program success team, that team that correlates, uh, that works on the relationship between us and the customer on the business level, one of the best things we can do is connect our customers, right, the people who use our solution, with their management, with their executives. Because then we can show the value and propagate that throughout the organization. The best way to do it is through organized quarterly management reviews that we do with customers. We have a set agenda I can share with you later if you'd like um, how we do that. But it's creating that tie between the technical, tactical level and the executive, we found is highly correlated with success of our program, success of our relations, and we have specific measurements for that. By the way, for us, within an enterprise level B2B, the metric we hold is about every, one in every six customers uh, we hold quarterly management reviews, so about 16, 17, 18%. The last one here is a portion of healthy programs. That's a very specific to our business. We had a certain um, um, metric for what is healthy program within APIs you might have in your businesses uh, such metrics as well. On the financial side, it's pretty straightforward. We're looking at um, monthly revenue um, from customers as number one. How can we increase that? Uh, the team's budget, right? So we have a certain budget. It's not necessarily gross margin, but we have a budget and we try to meet or exceed that. Uh, meet or exceed billable utilization, that's the most prevalent um, metric for professional services and indicates how much time they work on customer paid project as opposed to other projects and we measure around it. And the number of sales opportunities in the pipeline, which is a leading indicator for revenue in the future as opposed to the MRR, which is what we signed last quarter. So that's the balance between leading and lagging. Um, like I said, the last two are lower in um, weight, but still very important. Helping other teams, we look at things like increased number of referenceable customers, customers who are willing to provide a good word on us to other customers, to analysts, etc. We're looking at decreased number of customer referrals, which are very different from references. References is the willingness to say something good about us. A referral is, hey, Mr. Customer, if you see value from what you do with us, can you look through your LinkedIn profile and give me two names of, connect me with two names of people in your network that you think we can also add value to. And if the customer is happy and sees value, they should probably see value by connecting you to other people. And there are no better qualified leads than those that come from existing happy customers. So we want to capitalize on that, we want to utilize that, and we want to measure that. Um, and the last one is increased number of customer case studies, um, webinars, any kind of marketing activity that can help us on the marketing or sales side. In practice development, we're looking at maintaining capacity, which is the net of increasing people and losing people, right? So there's a certain benchmark of how many people we need to do what we need to do. We look at specific practice development opportunities. What I do with every one of my team leads is I ask them at the beginning of every quarter, or actually at the end of every quarter, 
during the next quarter, what are your top priorities? What do you want to get done? What's new processes that you think you should be doing? And we agree on a certain number of those on their list, which is always longer than what is achievable in a certain quarter, how many they are committing to do. And then it's up to them to do however they want. But I want to make sure that there's a certain number, certain level of quality that we increase, increase how we do what we do within support, within PS, within customer management, etc. And the last one is invest in people uh, development. We have a certain amount of time that we know we need in order to onboard a new employee. We have a certain amount of time and certain activities that we know we need to invest in existing employees, and we measure how much time we spend on that. Onboarding, training, performance reviews, etc. We want to make sure that we invest in our people. We live in a knowledge economy. Our people are knowledge employees. If we don't improve their knowledge, their skill, they will become stale or they will leave. So we need to invest in that. We want to invest in that. This is how it looks, and I definitely don't, want, don't expect you to read it, but uh, the spreadsheet, that's the way it looks. And it's a combination of all of those uh, metrics. As you can see, we look at is these leading or lagging indicators. We have a certain explanation on the right-hand side and source for data. So we've done the work. Is this coming from the product? Is this a report from Salesforce, from Splunk, from whatever? And then there are numbers, right, that we measure for ourselves set up for ourselves every quarter. This is my spreadsheet for the customer success team, and it cascades down to each of the teams. This is an example for the for professional services. Not all of the metrics here appear on mine, but they roll up to some elements on the higher level. This spreadsheet can then um, cascade down to each individual so people can look at it and say, okay, I know exactly what I'm expected to do. I know what my target, I was hired to do my good job, I'm going to do it. Right, so we, we empower employees by the essence of giving them very clear targets to do what we expect them to do. Another facet that I wanted to spend slightly more time on, exactly three minutes and 20 seconds, um, is specifically on the customer program success management team because I think that's more of what uh, you guys are interested in, I think. And here we have set, we have set six MBOs, management by objective, right, six objectives that we are tracking, and I'll show you the spreadsheet or the, the metrics by which we calculate this. Adoption, uh, which by the way, over time, we have eliminated in the weight and combined the weight on program expansion. So program expansion now has on our list 25%. Adoption, we measure, but we don't calculate in the score. Because we figured adoption, the, the way the customer really uses the solution, we don't really influence. We influence the, the parameters by which they use. So I'll go on that over the specific in a minute. Adoption is the number. So for us in the API management is how many calls, how many APIs are exposed, how many developers are using the solution, et cetera, et cetera. Program expansion, like I talked before, specifically we looked at correlation between certain features and certain activities to the customer success, and we measure specifically those to drive better usage. And I'll show it to you in a minute. Value to the customer is the next one. You can see that's a very high uh, percentage in the total score because we want to promote the notion of it's all about the customer in the end of the day, so let's measure, let's help measure the value the customer gets from us. Relationship, uh, we look at how high within the customer organization, how high within our organization, what quality level, quarterly management reviews, etc. And then the last two, monetary and non-monetary value to us. Um, here's how that spreadsheet looks like. Uh, and you can see what we have done is we've created a structure where every one of those MBOs, for example, program expansion is the MBO, has four drivers to it. So essentially, the way we talk to our team is you have a way to influence that score of program expansion in four ways. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't care if you use a combination of all four or you just want to work on one, as long as those together exceed your goal in improving the score of program expansion. For us, for example, developer outreach and strategy services are two particular services that we found highly correlated with customer success. Each of them has a range of you know, one to four of the type of uh, service provided, and we measure that. The next two are um, software components. How many more features of our solution the customer is utilizing? and number of business units um, that the, that, uh, within the customer that is using us. For example, um, Disney is a customer of ours, but also NBC, but also ESPN. And the fact that we are having so many different divisions within the big company 
increases our stickiness within the company, increases the value the customer gets from us because more teams are using it. Um, let me spend one minute on, well, less than one minute, um, on value to customer because I'll be very honest, it's the hardest one to measure. It's the hardest one to really figure out how much of what we do really influence the customer, right? Um, um, Kirkel on, on the, um, uh, the, the third keynote this morning had this wonderful slide, you're not the center of the universe. We are not the center of the universe for the customer as well. We're trying to influence as much as possible. So what we are really measuring mostly is not the extent of value, but does the customer measure value from what we do? And that question in and on itself is actually quite insightful when we talk to customers. Because most of them, again, measure adoption. How many APIs have been used or how many developers have used us? Not, is it driving revenue to them? Is it driving brand awareness to them? Is it driving ease of recruiting people, et cetera? So we're pushing on those messages. You can see some of the others. And again, the presentation will be shared after you can go into the details of it later on. This is what it looks for an individual. Right, it's a big spreadsheet. On the top, each of those colors are those uh, MBOs with four columns to indicate the different drivers. At the bottom, you can see the blue or greenish and yellow line. These are some, you know, some columns, one for last quarter and one for this quarter, and we compare. So every MBO, we want to see increase from one quarter to the next by a certain amount, and we are basically measuring for every individual across their customer base how much is their performance. And then every individual can get a report card that says here's how you've done on every one of those topics. You can see the numbers on the bottom are the raw numbers and on the top we sum it up, right? Each of those six MBOs, there's a score and there's a total and we can have a discussion with the employees about how well they've done and where they have done well or not. These are some of the values we get from it, right? So if you see number one, we can track the overall team performance. So when I talk to my management, when we talk to the board, we can say, this is what our team contributed in each one of those um, MBOs, quarter after quarter. This is where we have great success. This is where we have less success and we need to improve, etc." Number two, we can track individual performance against other in the team. So what you see here is one quarter the whatever 12 or so people on the team in that quarter, and we can see some of them are doing better than others, so what do we do about it? Do we improve, do we expand the, um, uh, the work of those that do well? Do we provide support to those that don't do well? Do we change team structure, team um, assignments, etc.? And the last one, we can track individual performance over time, so this is one person's scorecard over the last three years almost, right? So you can see how they performed over time. And we can have discussions about certain times, right? The red in the middle, where they had challenges in certain times, and we can try to figure out why and what we do to help and improve on that. So essentially, the metrics here give us insight that we can take action on in order to improve our performance. This is one example from a quarterly operating review that we have done with our team on one, um, on one uh, quarter. We looked at this quarter, overall we have done 174% of our target. Phenomenal, right? It's fantastic. Um, also, almost all of those program success man uh, managers have exceeded their goals, they're in green. By the way, I, I hid the numbers and just left the, the colors for you to see. And you know, we outperformed uh, on monetary value and um, value customers. Um, so two categories we've done extremely well, however, um, two of them we've done quite poorly, including program expansion. And because program expansion is the leading indicator, indicator to what happens in the future, that quarterly review that we've done with our team was focused almost solely on what do we need to do right now, immediately, this week and this month, in order to overcome the fact that last quarter we have not done very well in program expansion. And if we don't stay very close to that, most likely this quarter will do very poorly. So, an example again of how we measure. Questions? We're not just, sorry, we're just not just no questions. 